Hey guys, and CSFan001 here for another one of those weekly trophy list update videos. Today's date is Monday, May 25th, 2020. Happy Memorial Day. Thank you to all who have served and all those who have sacrificed for this nation. This is a United States holiday. I don't know if any other countries have something similar. But anyway, today's date of Monday, May 25th. This update will have covered the week of the 18th through the 24th. Uh, this was a very non-productive week, and therefore, I don't really think this is going to be that long of a video, and it's not entirely my fault for once that I wasn't productive, it's the fault of other circumstances. So, I will get into that in a moment, but this past week, I have actually been playing some GTA 5, and in GTA 5, they were doing another one of those, like, you know, log in and you'll get money by doing stuff. Uh, previously, it was like if you log in during May, you get $500,000. And now it's log in and complete 10 daily challenges. I think, I don't know what the last day of it, though, is. I had heard that it might be May 27th is the final day, which means you would no longer have enough time. Because you can only get three a day. But I've been doing the daily challenges the last few days. I've completed eight so far, so I just need to do two more. And you'll get a million dollars for doing it, which is great. I've also been slowly working on the whole buy $8 million worth of stuff from the heist update. And that's actually pretty easy because you can just buy and sell the armored Karumas over and over again. Because you buy them for $525, you sell them back for $345, thousands by the way. So you do lose a nearly $200,000 for each one. But it's a lot better than spending a full $8 million, unless you have a lot of extra money to spend. And I mean, I still have to complete three of the five heists. So I still have to complete the three, like, the last three of them. So I still got a ways to go on that, plus the Doomsday Heist. But that's all, you know, not too high on priority. I'm sort of, again, saving that one. But I'm going to keep logging in whenever I can for free money type of stuff. Because there's no point of not doing so. So, now that we get to our actual trophies for the week, Fallout 76, I'm still working on Wastelanders. Obviously, I didn't earn any trophies this week in it, but I am now working on the actual main quest lines again. So, I'm past level 20 and all, so I'm currently working on, like, the first story quest for each faction. I'm probably going to do not as many of the raider quests this time because there's not really much of a purpose of it. Mainly just plow through the settler's quest line as quickly as possible. As for becoming allies with the Foundation, I am, like, maybe a quarter of the way through Neighborly, so I'm making slow progress. The only problem is this trophy's awful because, as far as I know, there's currently no method you can use to speed it up anymore because I think that any methods that were there before have been patched or were just kind of complicated and not really worthwhile. It's not hard to do, it just takes absolutely freaking forever. Although, I do like the fact that I'm getting treasury notes for doing stuff because there's some cool stuff I want to buy. I've talked about that before. I really want that Goss minigun because it's supposedly really overpowered. I've already got the Comrade Collectron and the ammo creator for the camp, so that's, that's good, I guess. So the only game I actually earned trophies in this week is Hasbro Family Game Night, so... This was one I didn't really know when I was going to go back to it, and I actually went back to it because of what happened with the game I wanted to work on this week. I wanted to be playing Call of Duty Ghost PS3 this week. The copy was supposed to be coming in last Wednesday or Thursday. It didn't get here till Friday, which I chalk up to the whole virus situation. I'm not, not getting it here in time, but I mean, that was fine, so got to start it on Friday. Only, of course, the game doesn't work. It doesn't, the extinction mode doesn't work. They're like, oh, the game is in acceptable condition. Everything works fine. Nope, doesn't. Not at all. And that's why I'm kind of getting sick of buying stuff on eBay. Because this is the second consecutive time this has happened. It happened with Red Dead 1 when I bought a copy of Red Dead. And the disc didn't work at all. In this case, the extinction mode didn't work. I didn't try to go into a multiplayer lobby or the single player. But the extinction mode didn't work. So, because of that, I couldn't go for the DLC trophies, and I even have two people I'm going to do everything with. But no, no, this person had to be a douchebag scammer and give me a disc that didn't work. So, I mean, I got refunded for it. It only cost me like $4.50 or something, but it's just more inconvenient than it is anything else. And it's probably why I'm not going to be buying any more off of eBay. 
So I've got another copy coming on Amazon because not a single GameStop within a 50 mile radius of here has a copy of Call of Duty Ghosts for PS3. You also can't buy the standard edition of it on the PlayStation Store, at least on PS3. You can only buy the gold and the hardened editions, which are something like $45 and $80 respectively. So obviously I'm not about to go out and spend that much money because they only it's only because they include the DLC stuff, which I already have. I already have the season pass. So yeah, it's all just, it was a very unfortunate series of events, so I'm not, not happy about how that happened, and because of that, I just decided, hey, I'll go ahead and log back onto this game that I've been meaning to finish for years. I mean, I can't actually platinum it because of the online trophy, I'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, that's what happened with COD Ghost, so I wanted to get started on this week, unfortunately, didn't get started on it yet. Hopefully my other copy gets here from Amazon this week, I would hope it does. Because, I mean, I still got Prime shipping on it, but I don't even know with just the way everything's going these days. It may take it a long time. Hopefully, I'll get it sooner rather than later so I can get started on it because it's pushing back my entire schedule because I wanted to have it at least partially done by the end of May. But at the very least, I did complete a different game on my list. So now there's 20 games left on my list with trophies that are obtainable out of the 22 that are incomplete being this one and Homefront, uh, original Homefront being completely unobtainable at this point. So I'll go ahead and go through all the trophies because I basically got the platinum for this and I'll go through all the trophies anyway. So you have to play five of the seven games in this. And I don't even think this game's still on the PlayStation Store, by the way. So for this one, the first few trophies are for battleships. Score a hit on your first turn. And most of these trophies, the good thing is you can do it against a against a human opponent so you can even play both on the same controller or sometimes you have to play on separate controllers but regardless uh that makes these trophies pretty easy so just score on your first turn because you'll know where your opponent placed everything uh sunk only the destroyer first same thing you'll know what to do uh this is like a different game mode where you can launch a whole bunch of shots at once once again as long as you're playing against yourself it's not difficult at all uh, this one is, again, not difficult at all as long as you have two people playing on the same controller or as long as you're playing yourself on your own controller. And same thing with winning 20 games. This one takes a bit of time, but it's not difficult. So win a single game of Boggle, uh, finish a game using only five-letter words, so pick only a five-letter word. Uh, win a game, you can do this against yourself. Uh, I don't remember what this ruling is, but you can just play against yourself once again, I believe. Uh, this one, just play against yourself, and I mean, you don't even have to win, you just have to spell the word. Uh, this was the last tro one of the last two trophies I got for winning 50 multiplayer games. This one actually glitched out on me back in the day, or I just didn't have the right setup is also possible. But you can do it against yourself, it just has to be on two separate controllers, it can't be done on the same controller for some reason. But just win 50 multiplayer games, you can do the 30 second games for one round. It's not difficult at all, it just, you know, takes a solid 45 minutes to an hour to get through, but at least it's easy, so that's another game mode of this done. Then you have Connect 4, uh, these ones are, like, the first couple are pretty easy, as you can see I got most of these trophies, like, all on the same days. Uh, even winning 50 games, I mean, that's just time consuming, but I think you could play it against yourself. This one was the only one, this was probably the hardest trophy in the overall game, because you had to do it against an AI, but I think I ended up like actually looking up a thing like a Connect 4 solver online, so it told me exactly how to win each time, like just plug in what I did, plug in what the opponent did, and it showed me how to win. Because it can be a little bit difficult to win multiple times in a row on your own if you're not, you know, pretty good at the game, and I'm just dumb at times. Then we get to Sorry, and this is where most of the trophies I was missing were, because I got a couple... Does that say I did that one back in 2016? Really? I thought that was one of the more... Never mind. Okay, so Sorry is also one of the more time-consuming modes, mostly for me because I don't think I've ever played the actual board game version of Sorry. So, I mean, winning one game is obviously not difficult, and winning a game after moving at least one pawn from each team back to the start, that's probably going to happen naturally while winning a single game. But the last three trophies, I got all of these over the course of just a few games, and for all of these, what I would suggest is uh, playing where you have yourself and your opponent. Like, have yourself and one of the other players be a human, and then you only go against two AI. That way, you and your yourself basically can 
conspire to beat the AI pretty easily. So, doing the two pawns from each opposing team, these trophies usually don't unlock until after you complete a game, by the way, so don't be afraid if a trophy doesn't unlock right after you finish the requirements for it. So that made winning five games a lot easier, but moving two pawns back from each team is pretty easy. So is using all the bonus cards in a single game, even though that's a little bit luck-based as to whether or not you can do it in time. Uh, Sorry Sliders is another game I never really played as a kid or anything, but it's pretty easy. Just win one game, win a game under five minutes. I think I did those at the same time. I'm pretty sure with this one you can probably at least somewhat play against yourself, though I don't really remember because it's been a long time. Win 20 times, I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, use the Ice Pawn 10 times, so that's just like a certain power-up, I believe. And then play it for over an hour, which is pretty likely to come while you're going for everything else in it. So, nothing to worry about really there. So, that's it for the game-specific trophies. You have this trophy right here, Play Any Game Online. This is the unobtainable trophy. And at the time that I purchased the game back in 2013... The guide for the game did not say anything about the trophy being unobtainable. If I had known that it was unobtainable, if the guide had been correct back in the day, I probably would not have bought the game because of obvious reasons. So I'm a little bit annoyed that they didn't fix the guide to show that it was unobtainable at the time because it had already been unobtainable for a little while. It's fixed now and it has been for a number of years, but... Unfortunately, this one trophy is unobtainable and I highly doubt things will ever be changed, but... You know, maybe maybe someday someone over at EA would be nice enough to just change the trophy description to be play a multiplayer game. So then just log in with two controllers or with two people on one controller, play one game together, and you get your trophy and your platinum. That would be nice. I mean, it's not going to happen, but can be helpful, you know. Uh, customize the game room. That's just once you unlock something, just use it to customize with. Although I guess I, I don't know how I didn't get that trophy until, like different or was that when i first played them i must have really spread out my playing of this game like they're all on weird dates i don't know who knows it's it's been almost you know seven years since i did this it's been like over seven years since i did a lot of this three total hours of play time that's unmissable it's going to take at least well over three hours to get all the trophies and this basically is a platinum trophy right here by getting all the trophies except for these three and you'll get this last gold so, yeah, basically that's a Platinum Trophy. I mean, I would have the Platinum Trophy if it was still obtainable. Uh, if, let's say that that trophy either didn't count or was still obtainable, your Platinum difficulty would be, I would say, around a 2, 2.5 out of 10, and probably 10 to 15 hours, maybe less depending on how good you are at certain games. So I would say 10 to 15 hours, though, and around a 2, 2.5 out of 10. So that was the only game I got trophies in this week. Like I said, I wanted to work on Call of Duty Ghosts, but was unfortunate with everything that happened with buying a copy and the fact that I can't get another one from GameStop anywhere. I also can't get a controller from GameStop because they're all sold out too. So yeah, I'm like, I mean, I have two fully functional controllers and one that barely functions, so I'd like to have another one though. But anyway, with that, level 74, 2%, 18,381 total trophies, 438 platinums, 2,503 golds, 4,833 silvers, 10,607 bronzes. So, plans for the upcoming week. I will continue to work on Fallout 76. I will continue to play a little bit of GTA 5 just to make sure I get that extra million dollar bonus. Other than that, though, not entirely sure what I'm going to be playing at this coming week. Like... Call of Duty Ghosts, when it gets here, I'll be playing, but I just don't know exactly when it's going to get here. Hopefully sooner rather than later. And I might go on and go back to Borderlands Game of the Year Edition and give at least one try to the Angelic Ruins and see if I can beat it in Mad Moxie's Underdome, because that's the last thing I need. I mean, it's three hours, and it's the final trophy I need. I just don't really want to waste the time when I know that that's the most likely one to fail. Uh, as for another thing, though, I think I mentioned this last week about... The Division 2 and Star Wars Battlefront 2. It sounds like a lot of people are saying I should go for Battlefront 2. I know that it's a lot easier to grind the XP now. I know that that stuff is a lot faster and a lot easier than it was. And most of the trophies are single player. And a lot of the multiplayer trophies aren't too difficult. And a number of them can still be done in the same method as getting the new XP. But I am curious, you know, do you still have to boost a couple of the trophies? Mainly looking at that one for like destroying 25 hero ships or something. Do you have to still boost that one, and how many people does it take to boost? 
that's my main question I have for that. Otherwise, I'm not really worried about it, and it does look like the game's improved to where it'll be worth trying out. Plus, it only has one DLC, and the DLC is single player, so it's not even bad. But I do want to do that game. I think that would be cool to get both the Battlefront games done. And as for the Division 2, I know that the Platinum and the first four DLCs, like the Raid and the three additional story missions, are not too terribly difficult. I mean, I know the Raid takes eight people, so you have to have eight people in the lobby together, but you can do it on, like, the easy difficulty, so it's not too terribly bad. But how bad is the Warlords of New York DLC? Like, is it hard? Because the trophies look like they were pretty rare in it from what I looked up. That's the only thing that I'm a little bit concerned about. That and the pretty high cost of it at the time as well. So, just asking those couple of questions again, but otherwise, that's pretty much it for this week's update. Like I said, working on Fallout 76 this week. I will do a little bit more GTA 5. Hopefully, COD Ghosts will get here, and hopefully, maybe get started on the Division 2 and Star Wars Battlefront 2 at some point. So, we'll have to see. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you can answer those couple of questions for me, I will always be gracious for that. And thank you guys for watching and see you guys later this week for videos and streams.